That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I am Dr. Quentin Dockin, Managing Principal Investigator on the Flower Garden Banks Monitoring Project. The ability to take a, a self-contained air source and drop down into an environment where humans were never meant to be, it's, a, it's an incredible sensation. I may, be a, may have been a strange kid, I don't really know, but I've known since the time I was six years old that I wanted to be a scientist. I had no idea what type of a scientist, but I wanted to be a scientist. And then Lloyd Bridges and Sea Hunt came along. <laughs> and I thought, boy, this is great. This guy is having all these great adventures, rescuing these damsels in distress, and uh, that's for me. My name is Carl Beaver, and I'm a marine biologist with the Center for Coastal Studies at Texas A&M University. Most people take a, a vacation to go to the beach and play in the water and explore and uh, have adventures. Uh, I do it all the time. It's my living. There's always something new to see. It's always beautiful, colorful. Uh, there's excitement, drama, and, you know, you just have to learn how to look for it, and it's there. I left a job I was with bonuses. I was making close to 60 grand a year. I left that, came back to school, started, took a TA position over here where there's only two of us teaching 11 classes, $600 a month. I went from 60000 a year to $600 a month. Now, you have to be a fanatic to do that. And you know what? I don't regret it a bit. Greatest thing I ever did. I think it's important that uh, Texans realize that this is national treasure. It's sitting in Texas's backyard. The flower gardens are located uh, 110 miles east, southeast of Galveston. The flower garden banks are just mounds that were pushed towards the surface from bottom depth of about 400 feet by salt domes. These two mounds have uh, living coral growing on top of them because they do stick up close to the surface. The flower garden banks are one of the most unique, diverse, and healthy coral reef ecosystems, habitats on North America. It's the northernmost coral reef on the continental shelf of North America. One of the things that makes this reef system unique is that it is surrounded by the most active offshore oil and gas production area in the world. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's just completely surrounded. And yet, right in the middle of all of this, we have this coral reef uh, habitat. And so what we do is go out on annual cruises to ensure that we, there are no changes, no negative changes occurring in the, in the reef system itself. Should we see a negative change occurring? Well, it's our job to try to figure out why we're seeing a negative occurrence and how do we reverse that trend. Uh, we're looking at a whole lot of different issues or, or characteristics of the water body out here, the water column, as well as the flora and fauna itself from which we can present the, a big comprehensive picture of what the flower garden banks look like. Most of it's done photographically and we take this data back into the lab and through our analysis of these photographs we can provide some long-term ind indicators of the health, growth, and sustainability of the flower garden base coral reefs. 
This system is designed to take uh, repeatable photographs of a particular area in the ocean floor on the reef so that we can compare those areas year after year after year. The camera system is set up so that we can produce an identical photograph every year by orienting the camera in the same direction from the same spot, recording the same area of, of the reef. The good thing about the photography is it's non-invasive. It doesn't destroy the reef. It allows us to look at it, compare it, and hopefully protect it without harming it. This is a shot of the community taken in 1998. We have the large post here that we had on the framer. This particular community colony here is of interest to me because it's relatively healthy, pretty large, uniform color, maybe a little bit of damage here, and perhaps a little bit here. Now we look at the same photograph the following year. Again, here's the post from the camera that we used but it's got a good bit more damage, possibly disease, possibly damage from fish or anchoring. But these are the areas that we're looking for. We wanna know how much of this is going on. Now that we have both before and after borders on one sheet of paper, we can see the original colony, and we can see areas that are damaged. After that, it's quite a simple matter of determining the percent of that community that has decreased over the year. We have good comparable data for the last eight years. It's important for us to continue monitoring these reef systems and make sure that the activity that is going on in the oil and gas industry and terrestrial here, here on, on land doesn't reach out and touch our reefs in a way that we don't want them to. Organized monitoring of the Flower Gardens Bank has been going on since 1989. And to date, all of our findings have been positive. We have not uncovered or observed anything that would suggest that uh, the demise of the flower gardens are imminent. They, by all of the measures that we take, they appear to be a healthy, growing, flourishing habitat. These corals take hundreds of years to grow. They work on geological timescales. And to look at trends, to see trends, you've got to have a long-term database. We actually know more about the moon and the surface of the moon than we do the depths of the oceans. The beauty of the flower gardens it is something, just, just as, as a forest or a mountain will speak to the spirit of, of a person, so will a coral reef. You cannot observe any of it without beginning to appreciate the blessing of your life and ability to be here. <laughs>